looks inviting, doesn't it? But is it safe to go in? Well, there are qualified lifeguards who are clean and smartly dressed in the correct uniform. There are rescue aids. There's good signage. It shouldn't be a problem. But what about the water? Sometimes things aren't always what they seem. If bathers come into contact with enough harmful bugs, usually from people who don't shower before using the pool, they can become ill and, in the worst cases, even die. Basically, there are three types of contamination that can affect a pool. Biological, tiny bugs which are invisible to the naked eye. Some of these bugs can cause serious illness, whilst others simply create an unpleasant smell and cause buildings and fixtures to decay. Bugs love warm, damp conditions, so pools are ideal places for them to live and grow. Did you know that each bather will contribute in the region of 45 millilitres of urine when they use a swimming pool, and even more in a spa? If that wasn't enough, did you also know that we contribute about a quarter of a gram of faeces, which in itself can contain up to a billion bacteria? Remember those people who had bugs washed off them when they showered before entering the pool? Well, now you can see why showering is so important. It's our only proactive defence against contamination. There's also physical contamination, which is caused by dirt and other debris, such as leaves, grass and hair, and chemical contamination. Possible sources of chemical contamination include using the wrong or incorrect amount of chemicals in our pools sweat and cosmetics like suntan cream or even a contaminated water supply from the mains or a well are all examples of chemical contamination. So showering before getting into the pool is a proactive defence against contamination. And what do you think our reactive defence is? Yes, you've probably guessed it, an adequate level of chemical disinfection in the water at the correct pH. But what does all that mean? Pool water must be adequately disinfected at all times to ensure there's little or no risk of infection to bathers. It's essential that any disinfection system provides enough disinfectant to kill off bugs as they're introduced into the pool. This is known as having a residual disinfection, or in the case of hypochlorite disinfectants, free chlorine. The word free is quite important because it means the chlorine has not yet combined with any contamination in the water. When it has, the free chlorine used to fight the contamination is known as combined chlorine. The objective is to keep the free chlorine level at least twice as high as the combined chlorine level whilst keeping the free chlorine level within the right parameters. If you don't, people might suffer from stinging eyes or skin irritation and you might notice a strong and unpleasant chlorine smell in the air. Either way, it won't be a very nice place for you to work in or for your guests to use. Where a bromine disinfectant like BCDMH is used, it's desirable to achieve a free to combined bromine ratio of 2 to 1, just like chlorine. However, the most important test is for total active bromine. The reason we don't worry so much about measuring the combined level of bromine is because unlike combined chlorine, combined bromine is a relatively good disinfectant. The other important thing to know is the pH value of your pool water. You all went to school, so you already know this, but just in case you missed a lesson or two, a pH of 7 is known as neutral, below 7 it becomes acidic, and above 7 it becomes alkaline. Your ideal pH range for pools is between 7.2 and 7.8. If it goes below 7.2, bathers might experience sore eyes, skin irritation, and there might be a strong smell of chlorine. On the other hand, as the pH rises above 7.8, the free chlorine takes longer to kill the bugs and generally becomes much less effective. Now, if you're using hypochlorite or bromine disinfectants in swimming pools, spas, interactive splash zones or any other type of pool, you need to know the correct levels of disinfection so that when you carry out your daily water tests, it's clear whether the levels are okay or not. 
If the test results are outside those levels, it's not acceptable and action needs to be taken. Wouldn't it be good if all that and the ability to record water test results and corrective actions were all contained in one simple, easy to use monthly document? Well, there is such a document. And it's been produced by John Biles at LeisureSafe, who, until establishing the company, was responsible for safety standards in the largest private operator of pools in the UK with over 50 multifunctional facilities. There's a parameters table. You'll see a range of facilities down the left-hand side. Next to it is the pH and the range of disinfectants you might be using, along with their correct parameters here in the green zone. If daily water test results slip outside the green zone, there's guidance on what to do. There's also a pool water test record sheet for each day of the month where you can record your water test results and a section on every record sheet for recording action you take to address test results that enter the amber or red zones. That's not all though. There's a water testing policy and record sheets. There's a section for microbiological water testing and a whole host of other features. This really is a great management tool to have at your side. Used correctly, it supports the pool operator and provides an organisation with a system which demonstrates excellent standards of control in a high-risk area. To obtain your copies, which can also be tailored to your own policy requirements, get in touch with LeisureSafe.